and with my clients, I, I really drill down into each of these areas and assess where people are and how we can level up into um, greater areas of, of performance in all of these buckets. The six pillars of high performance that uh, maybe uh, that uh, you had uh, some on the show notes yeah. here. So maybe walk us through maybe just a couple of those those pillars that really stick out, and especially in today's today's environment, right, where mm -hmm. you have lots of rapid change going on. You have this really fast pace of life, a lot of noise that's coming in from all different you know media and and information. And so walk us through maybe some of those pillars and how they help best help your clients. Yeah. So I think it's first important to level set on what even is high performance because being, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are high achievers, but maybe not high performers. And I wanted to clarify the difference, right? So high performance, the way I see it is it's succeeding beyond standard norms over the long term while maintaining your well-being and positive relationships. So make sure I got so, that. So succeeding, yeah. succeeding and uh, above and beyond your norms um, mm -hmm. in a continual, you know, long-term basis while maintaining, uh, you say that last part again. Well-being. Well-being. And positive relationships. And positive relationships. And okay. Keep going, please. Yeah. So, so yeah. So here's, here's the difference. You know, I, I've been in New York for 11 years and I I'm surrounded by high achievers, right? High achievers who are killing it in their, their jobs, um, making good money, but they're unfulfilled. They maybe aren't taking good care of themselves and their relationships aren't great. So that's the, maybe the difference is that we have high achievers, but they're not always high performing in that they're able to sustain the well-being, positive relationships, and you know, sometimes there's there's one-hit wonders in your career. So, so making that difference between high achievers, being a high achiever, but are you actually a high performer? Uh, that high performer really, it's it's also a, a feeling as well, where there's joy, there's confidence, there's full engagement in your life. You're not avoiding difficulties, you're not avoiding things or challenges. So. I think that's a good a good distinction. Um, so I I studied like I said with Brendan Burchard and he did this massive study with the High Performance Institute, and they really came up with these six pillars of high performance. So um, I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so there's these six pillars are really this framework that you can think about leveling up your life in. So the first one is psychology which we all know about mindset and your thoughts and beliefs. Um, but it's really this idea that you can, you can cultivate and take action in those areas. So first area is psychology and having awareness around that. Next is physiology, which is your well-being. It's your food, your water, your exercise, all of those areas, um, which is the whole world in of itself, but having awareness and practices in those areas. Um, next is your people skills. So your ability to influence or persuade, or we can bucket sales in there, or your management style in that area. And um, next is your productivity. So that is not just like, are you productive in your outputs each day, but are you actually focusing on the right things that are moving the needle? Do you know when to start, when to quit in certain things? So having some more nuanced understanding in those areas. Fifth is presence. And that goes back to, it's sort of this underlying area, which is, are you really cultivating the emotions you want in your life? Are you really present with your loved ones? Are you thinking off, you know, about something in the past or something in the future? Are you really in the here and now? And then the last one is purpose. And this is these feelings of aliveness and connectedness to yourself and to what you're doing um, in your life. And so are you really doing the things that make you feel fully alive so that, so that you can give back as well? So those are their six pillars that we 
and with my clients, I, I really drill down into each of these areas and assess where people are and how we can level up into um, greater areas of, of performance in all of these buckets. I, I love that. And I want you to pick one right now. I know this is going to be hard because I know it's everyone's yeah. a little different, but in particular for the high achieving real estate entrepreneur, operator, developer, you know, mm -hmm. someone who's been in the game a long time, you know, and has, it has a lot of experience, um, you know, ultra high net worth. What is the one that you would say, oh, too often this one is always the probably the most challenging one that they're facing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would go with presence because the, the people that I have interacted with in, you know, in the real estate world is, you know, very, you know, have productivity on lockdown. There's always hacks and different things you can do. People skills are on point, of course, always room for growth, but the presence and being able to cut down, like we talked about in the beginning of this call, cut down on the noise from the outside world and asking those questions of yourself, even a little bit beyond my, am I, you know, what's my why, but like being, being able to say, am, am I truly present with my loved ones? Am I present in this meeting? Do I really have full engagement in my life? And that seems like a little bit of it's as, um, a little bit more of a woo woo, you know, angle in, but I think it's so important because without that, life feels flat. It feels like you're going through the motions. And when you are present and know how to click in, drop in and, and be with others, you, you show up differently. And the, the, actually the outcomes of your, whatever engagement you're in, whatever is happening in your life, the outcomes might be different because you're actually there. You're with someone and you're bringing your full self to that. So I, I think presence is a big one, especially in the always on and distracted world that we're stepping into more and more. It's actually a skill that we can continue to cultivate. And I think it has outcomes in all of the areas that we're, we're talking about.